Hello friends, welcome back to another session of Web Technologies. In today's class, I'm going to discuss about the advantages of servlet over CGI. What is meant by CGI? CGI stands for Common Gateway Interface and uh, CGI was used before servlets. Okay, so it is prior to servlets. Um, so what are the disadvantages of the CGI? Uh, if the number of uh, clients increase it takes more time for sending the response and for each request it starts a process and web server is limited to start processes and it uses platform dependent languages like c and c plus plus so those were the limitations or the disadvantages with the cgi so that's the reason the servlets technology have taken boom and now coming to the servlets, servlets are Java programs that run on web servers to process the request of the client. So here, uh, so we know what is a web application. So there will be a client and the client will be sending the request uh, to the server. So say, for example, we are having a web server here and say the client wants to retrieve some data from the database. So the client directly cannot interact to the database. So, so the client will interact to the like through the browser will send a http request will send a http request to the http server over here so which we call it as a web server as well so now this web server will actually contact the database through the servlet okay so here we'll be writing the servlet and through the servlet we'll be actually contacting the database the servlet will get the response from the database create a response and send it back to the client so we can also say that servlets are middle layer between client and database applications which are hosted on the http server so now let us look into what are the advantages of the servlet over cgi so the first advantage is that uh, so servlets uh, give better performance compared to the uh, CGI. So let us see why servlets give better performance than CGI. Due to interpreted nature of Java, programs written in Java are slow. We, we already know that compared to C and C++. But the Java servlets run very fast. These are due to the way servlets run on web server. For any program, initialization takes significant amount of time. But in case of servlets, initialization takes place first time. It receives a request and remains in memory till times out or server shutdowns. After servlet is loaded to handle a new request, it simply creates a new thread and runs the service method of the servlet. So that's the reason it doesn't create a new process every time. So that's the reason um, servlet's performance is better compared to CGM. Okay. Uh, second uh, advantage is that it is platform independent. Uh, platform independent, why it is platform independent is that because it, is, it uses Java. So servlets are written entirely in Java. So that's why they are platform independent. Servlets can run on any servlet enabled web server. Uh, say, for example, if you develop a web application in Windows machine, running a uh, Java web server, you can easily run the same on Apache web server as well without uh, any modifications or compilation of the code. Platform independency of the server provides a great advantage over CCL. Now, coming to the third one. So servlets execute in the address space of the server, so making it memory safe. Now, next difference uh, between CGI and servlet is that servlet uh, advantage is secure. Servlets are server-side components, so it inherits the security provided by the web server as well. So servlets are also benefited with Java Security Manager. So both the things, it gets security from the web server as well as from the Java Security Manager. So the next one is safety. So Java provides very good safety features like memory management, exception handling and so on. So the next one is it communicates with other applications using APIs like RMI, JDBC, etc. And uh, so the next uh, advantage is that it is extensible. Java servlets are developed in Java, which is robust and well-designed and object-oriented language, which can be extended. 
So next is the uses of servlets. So servlets read explicit data sent by the browser by using methods like get parameter, etc. And servlets can also read implicit HTTP request data, that is like cookies data, etc. And servlets process the data and they send the response to the browser. They act like the controller. So where in which uh, um, contacts the business logic, which is written in uh, the Java bean or so on. And then it creates the response and sends it back to the client. So these are all the advantages um, and the uses of the servlet. So the next point is we'll be looking into what are servlet listeners. So what are servlet events? Servlet, what is meant by event first? An event is a state of change. Say, for example, you click on a button or you uh, enter some text in a text field. All these are change of state. So these are considered to be events. In the web server context, uh, in the servlet context, there can be some events like um, the application initialized, application destroyed, or certain attributes created. So there is a change of state in the attribute scope or certain things. So all these are events, and you would do have servlet listeners which process these events. So servlet listeners allow us to do event handling in web applications. Listeners are interfaces which listen to a particular type of event. And when that event occurs, triggers the functionality. So listeners are interfaces. Okay, so it's not classes, it's a interfaces. Okay, right. Each type of listener is bind to a type of event. So you can monitor and react to events in a servlet lifecycle by defining listener objects whose methods that invoke when lifecycle events occur. They're bound to a particular event. And whenever that event occurs, the listeners can trigger a functionality. So these listeners are nothing but interfaces, and these interfaces will be having some access methods, and we need to override the functionality in the in our problem. Okay, so we need to write the functionality that we want. Uh, say for example, if you want to know how many um, items are there in the shopping cart. Uh, so you want to monitor that event. Whenever there is a uh, change in the cart, um, so you want to, a listener to handle that. So all that are nothing but the listeners. And there are eight listener interfaces in um, Java, uh, servlet listeners in Java. And the, all these listeners are there in Java X dot servlet and Java X dot servlet dot HTTP packages. So once you create this listeners, uh, creating the listeners means that you need to uh, implement this listener and then you need to override the abstract methods that are there in this particular listener in your servlet. So not only that, you need to add this in the web.xml, which is the deployment descriptor by using tag listener and listener for closing tag with the sub tag such as description and listener hyphen class tag. Okay, so these are the tags that you need to include in the web.xml. So let us take a look at this particular event listener. Each and every event listener is bind to a type of event. So these are the event classes and these are the event listeners. So you can see there are eight event listeners over here interfaces. So let me give you an example of servlet context listener. So this is the servlet context listener. So servlet context listener um is uh, with the servlet context event which gives a notification when servlet context is initialized or destroyed and based on the events a servlet context listener executes the functionality so there are two abstract methods inside this particular servlet context listener the first one is void context destroyed which will be taking servlet context event as its uh, parameter and the other method is void context initialized, which will be taking servlet context event object as its parameter. So what is context destroyed? This method is executed when application is destroyed and context initialized. This method is executed when application is initialized. So both will be taking the servlet context event object as its parameter. 
So what we need to do is, if you want to capture this event, like whenever the application is created or whenever the application is destroyed, if you want to do any of the activities, we need to override these methods. For example, um, whenever you want to, when the application is initialized, so at the same time, say you want to initialize the database connections as well. So you will be overriding the context initialized method. So say as soon as the application closes or application is destroyed, you want the cleanup activities like closing the database connections to happen. So you can override this context to describe method and write all the cleanup activities that you want to do whenever the application is destroyed. So uh, that's the purpose of this uh, servlet listings. So I hope all of you understood what is the servlet and its advantages of the GDI and what is the servlet business and its purpose. I hope this video is helpful to you. Thank you so much.